here we are, just outside the castles of Babylon, where King Berkey and his little jester badger like to stroll around, looking at board games that were planted in the years gone by, and seeing which of these are still standing in the woods of Evergreen. Hey, hey, hey. We are streaming live. Berkey and Badger are here going through our segment, The Woods of Evergreen, where we talk about board games from years gone by that we think still pass the test of time. Welcome to the show, Sir Badger. Hello. I was hiding in the wings. Yes, <laughs> hiding in the woods behind a tree, were you? Yeah, let's try that. Let's see, let's see if we can do that. Do half half face. <laughs> okay, I'll move over. <laughs> yes, hello everyone. We're on Facebook for a change. We're doing a, a very short show. Oh, I'll let you explain. Well, yeah, basically what we wanted to do is we have this segment with our Berkey and Badger Board Game Babble Show that we've been doing for over four years. And a lot of times our shows were going two plus hours. And we thought, what would be a way that we could could still create some additional content that people would enjoy. And people love this segment about the woods of evergreen. And this just gives us kind of a throwback look at games of yesteryear that we think still stand the test of time. And we are already up to the year 2011, but we are gonna, instead of doing this as a live YouTube uh, where people chat, we're gonna do this particular segment as a live Facebook, and you can join us on Facebook and chat with us. Uh, this is going to be a process for us to let everybody know that we are doing it, this segment on Facebook, but it'll also, you'll be able to reference this in a lot of our other pages with Berkey and Badger Facebook page and Berkey and Badger Twitter and the Board Game Guild on Board Game Geek 2248. Lower. And of course, board games everybody should Barry Doublet's podcast. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I am danger. So this is kind of fun because this just gives us a, a quick little a glimpse into some of these games and we're talking about mostly just game centric this we're going to try to keep these little shows down to you know 20 minutes to a half an hour so we've already got scott munkern is in the kingdom of babylon listening to the woods of evergreen <laughs> shame he couldn't stroll with us should we explain what the woods of evergreen are for these uh, facebook people that have never ever seen us before go ahead Okay, the Woods of Evergreen is our little area just outside of our, our humble kingdom of Babylon, yes, um, yes. where we've planted some trees. Well, we've planted some board games, and these board games for us have survived this test of time. They're games that we still play. Um, and we tuck are... them away in a safe place in yes. the Woods of Evergreen. Yes, and they've turned into some big stonking trees. These are games that we really, really love. Um, and as we said, we're looking at games which were released in 2011, and we're going to uh, we we made lists. We made a list of three each, and we are going to play this in a kind of game way. So if you are watching live, you can join in the game and and type what you think we're talking about in the chat. So um, Scott yeah. is here and says he's ex ex anxious to get his Holmes Viking game topper. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to get it to you as well. It's going to be cool. Yes. Should we should we talk about so, game toppers and before we go on? Uh we can we can give a quick uh a little plug for game toppers. Uh you still have time to late pledge your game topper. Do you have a drop for that? I do indeed. Whoa. This video was made possible with the help of game toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience with a game topper. 
And it's that simple. You can convert your existing table into a high quality gaming table where every game you play is upgraded and you can late pledge now and still get in on all the goodies of the Kickstarter. Over 40 unlocked stretch goals, 16 thematic wonderful game mats from Ryan Lockett, our scythe inspired resource mat and the Viking mat as well as a lot of other fantastic mats with our fantasy mat and, and adventure and dungeon. So many just gamer goodness stuff. Check out GameToppersLLC.com. Mm. Yes, I was going to pan the camera so you can see my game topper here, but then you'd see the games that I'm going to talk about, and that would spoil the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do this in kind of a little bit of a game show where we're going to describe the game to each other and see if we can guess. Now, we've looked through the list, so we might have a little bit of a heads up there, but we're going to each do three games, and uh, then we're going to be done with this little episode. Yeah, and there may be some crossover because... It's the way of life. We don't, we don't talk, do we normally? Oh, uh, we well, we don't always get to play the same games because you're in Europe, you're in France, and I'm you in come the south with... end of Babylon. You're in the north end, in the big castle. Yeah, that's and... that's it. In the yeah. big castle here, in in the northern northern kingdom. Well, I have a game. Mm -hmm. This particular game is from a very famous designer. This designer has designed a game that has sold millions of copies. But this is not that game, but it's the <laughs> same designer. So this game actually has an economic element to it. Mm. And it actually has something to do with flying through the air. An economic game about flying through the air. Yes. By a famous designer that this title was not very famous for. I would probably, I'm probably going to, ooh. Is there anything else you can tell me? <laughs> uh, it has wonderful little plastic miniatures. Okay. Uh, it does have a map, and it is in a ticket to ride size, size box. box. Oh, this sounds familiar. Um, is it? I'm thinking you're probably talking about Eric Lang for number one. Wrong. Okay. Uh, okay. So another famous designer. <laughs> Let's go with Katala. No, it's not Katala. Okay. All right. Okay. From a game that has sold over millions of copies. Okay. Same designer. Same designer about and flying not, and not, economy. Oh, yep, oh, yep. oh, 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 it's Alan Moore. It's Alan Moon. Alan Moon. Sorry. How can yep. I forget Alan He Moon? used to be more, but he changed his name to Moon just because he has a tendency to do that sometimes. <laughs> he just does it on a, on a whim. Fly me to the moon and let me pick up some airlines. Is it airlines or? It's Airlines of Europe by Ooh. Alan Moon. Tell me why this is still one of your evergreens. Look at these miniatures. Well, one of the things that I just love about it, I love economic games, and this has an economic element where you're building these airline uh, trade routes, basically, and you're branching off. But there's a set collection element to to what you're doing with it. There's there's uh, uh, an, an economic element where you're collecting stocks of these different airlines, and you're trying to go all over. Um, it, it's a family weight game that's really easy and accessible to the table, but it has enough of a twist that it isn't ticket to ride. And uh, our family just loves this game. And it's been quite a while since we've played it. But when I went through the list, I went, oh, I love that game. And uh, I'm excited to get that game back to the table. It stayed in my collection. And uh, that's basically why. Beautiful little miniature airplanes and all the different colors. Mm. I've never played it. Um... I've never seen. I haven't seen it around here in this area, in the, in the southern part of. It's by Real Public. Grand Games, mm -hmm. which yep. is not a publisher that you'll see here. Ah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm sure the game does uh, exist. Uh, Scott made a guess for Jamie Stegmaier, but <sighs> but not. No, maybe not. <laughs> but not. Are you doing your three games in any particular order? Uh, I'm I'm just uh, grab I I didn't go from first to last because okay. these are just games in this year. There was there was many that I could have chosen. Yeah, I agree. There was many. And again, you might just want to slide your camera or move your boxes because I can see the corner 
of what the next game is going to be. <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> oh no. Yes. All okay. Right. My game from 2011, which is an evergreen, which I still enjoy playing. It doesn't get to the table as much anymore, um, but I keep it because I know that it's quite easy to play. It involves dice. It, old, it involves a very familiar uh, mechanic with dice. Um, and basically, it's about um, trying to be the last monster standing or... Well, try and be the last monster standing or be be the first one to get 20 points. Oh, I know what this is. This is yes. fantastic game. And uh, it could have been on my list, but it is not. Uh -huh. But it is the game King of Tokyo from Yellow Games, Richard Garfield. It is indeed. Did you get this at home, children? <laughs> yes. Um, what so can tell I us tell why you? you like King of Tokyo. To King of Tokyo, I, it's the colorful art, and as you can see, there's a, this is the first edition. This is not the second edition. Um, I, I love the art. The art as I pop in. The idea of the game is very simple. The game actually plays really quickly, and as, as I said, there's this familiarity with the uh, Yahtzee-style mechanic, and people just seem to have real good fun with it, and um, we've always had good fun with it as a family. Um, and again, uh, although it's it's not language dependent, so I can't play it with my English family and my French family, um, you can kind of get away with it and explain the powers to so-and-so um, that this does that and the other. The components are really nice. Even though it's like cardboard standees, it works for the game. Um, this put yellow on the map. This game is still fantastic. Um, they haven't managed to make it any better than the base game. Um, yeah, they came the out with they came out with King of New York, which was kind of an expansion. But in my opinion, I prefer the standard game a lot more. Yeah, yeah, I prefer the, I prefer the standard version to New York. New York is it makes it a bit more gamery. Yeah. Um, whereas this is just kind of like light fun. This is like zombie dice, but a bit more interesting. Well, quite a bit more interesting than zombie I, dice. <laughs> I always, I always play the king. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you okay. very much. Okay, yeah, and again, now, uh, it's it's nice. I picked up some promos and I got some of the different monsters. And so, it people when players play, they they have a, a fight over which monster is which. So, yeah, we specifically designed our dice towers for our game topper to make sure that they accommodated the big Dude. chunky dice that are. King of Tokyo. Not one of these. Yep, exactly. You've, I've never tried it with the dice. So. Yeah, we've even done that in slow motion. It looks have so you? cool. Yeah. And there I was thinking I was your biggest fan, my sire. Let me have a look. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, they work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I have another game, and this is a game that is actually in my top 10 lists of all games. Uh, it's one of my favorite games from a noted uh, publisher uh, that I really enjoy a lot of their games. Uh, this is when this company was really just starting to, to shine. Uh, this is a deck builder. It has a space theme. Uh, uh, it has an expansion to it that I think is fantastic and I always play with. Uh, artwork is fantastic. Uh, what else could I say about it? Um, is it anything to do with Mr. Bonacore? It does. It is a stronghold game. Okay. So I'm probably going to guess that it's Core Worlds. Core Worlds is what it is. Ah! And and of course, the expansion here is Galactic Empires. Ooh. Um, I, and I've got I've got the base version over there, but I I still haven't played it. Oh, I mean, this, shame. that it. I mean, you have the Galactic Senate, and you have all these different things that you're able to do. But you're building your fleets basically, and you're trying to grab these core worlds. But in the process, you're getting different, you know, land troops, or you're getting different spaceships, and and. If, if there is a negative, is that it takes a little while to play the game. 
but I love this game. It's it's seriously just one of my one of my favorite games. Um, I don't get to play it very often. I wish I could play it more often. Um, in fact, I'm going to put it out because this is uh, if I have a a favor to call in or a birthday wish or something like that. That's going to be the first game we're going to play because I just have always had such a fantastic time. It still holds up, in my opinion. Okay, so you have a shelf of shame and a shelf of need to be played this week. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm starting to feel more remorse about these games of yesteryear not getting played than I am the shelf of shame games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Scott made another guess. He thought it was Space Base. No, nope, mm. not space sets. We're games of 2011 we're looking at. Ah. And, and that's the crazy thing. These are games that are eight years old, maybe nine years old, right? Yeah. It's crazy uh, to think that that much time, but I, I remember this is when I was starting to get really significantly into the greater uh, modern board game hobby. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, is, this is where I was starting to pick up as well. So Yeah. All right. Okay, my next game is a very simple game. It just involves decks of cards. Mm. I'm going to give this is going to be so easy for you guys. Okay, there are, are many, many versions of this game now. Okay, okay. Um, um, they have different themes. And in fact, each country, if you live in the States, there's actually an American version of this game that you can play because it contains American history. Obviously, if they sold it here in the France, it wouldn't go down well. But luckily, we have a French one, which has French history. Um, we also have other things like science and technology sets, and we also have um, uh, music in the theater. It's also spun off another series of games for more for families, which involve more cards, bigger cards, Nicer art um, and and different challenges. Hmm. And in the game, you'll basically have a, uh, some cards laid out in front of you, and the idea of the game is to get rid of those cards into the middle of the table. Turn off your phone when you're doing a podcast. Yes, and don't <laughs> walk around with dice in your pocket. <laughs> Scott seemed to think that it's Age of Civilization. No. Trivial Pursuit. Well, I was... No. When he started saying card art, I was thinking Dixit. But that doesn't sound quite right with your description for different histories. Yeah, you're trying to put these cards out in the right place. So, so like age of time or something like that? Yeah, it's something like that. When you're putting the cards out and if you if you put out the invention of the the dustbin uh before uh, the John Wayne film uh, True Grit, then that card stays there. If you put it after that card doesn't stay there because it's not in the correct timeline. Timeline. Okay. Yes. I have not timeline. played that at all. <sighs> This is such a simple, elegant, fantastic game. People were worried that, that there was no replayability in the game. But basically, this deck of like 110 cards, you shuffle it. You only get like a handful of them. And then you, as I said, you're placing them out and you're creating the timeline. And hopefully you're putting that card in the right slot in between different years. Because uh, if you don't, then you have to take another card. So you've constantly got cards in front of you. And as I said, the object of the game is to be the first to get rid of all your cards. It's as how, simple as that. How do you know if they're in the right order? Are they listed timeline on the card itself? Yes, the cards are double-sided. So on one side, they tell you, uh, like, uh, the song, uh, What a Wonderful World. So as you What see, a Wonderful it, World. That's Lou Reed. But on the back... You turn it over, as I said, once you put it in the position that you, you think the time that it, that song came out, and you flip the card over, and if it sits, as you can see, it's 1967, if it sits in between two other years perfectly, so it's chronological, then that card stays. So it is, 
it's it's interesting it's you know you're learning stuff at the same time and the cards are never in the same place and you're never playing with the same cards and you can mix all of these different editions together to create your own yeah your own that's text. Really fun. it's just infinitely replayable it's very very simple i've been playing this game with this this is the game that um i introduced when i first moved to france and it doesn't need language oh, you have, there to, is... you'll have to bring it to essen we'll have to give it a try yeah no problems it's simple it's elegant and it's just a great challenge it's trivial pursuit but done done right <laughs> yeah that sounds fun well i have another game and this is uh one of the most epic games that we have and mm. Uh, my son absolutely adores this game. I love the game too. It's one of these games that's difficult to get to the table because it is so epic. It takes a long time to play, but okay. it's set in space. Uh, it has an amazing uh, amount of different game mechanics that once you understand them is really fantastic. I always really fully immersive and that's what we talked about on our last Berkey and Badger board game babble show with Vince from Lucky Duck Games that will be up live on iTunes and Stitcher shortly uh, and can be viewed the live show on YouTube and uh, here I've posted it on Facebook as well so scroll down a bit and then you'll you'll see it okay wonderful you'll be able to see the show that we had Vince on but we talked about immersion well this game is absolutely immersive. Ooh. You know what it is? Well, it's definitely not TI3 because that was 2006, and you've already sang its praises. Um, um, so you're, you are incorrect. I know. I it is TI3, which is 2011. Twilight Imperium okay. first came out in 2006, but this is the third um... edition. So you were right on there. Um, this game, they, they made a lot of streamlined uh, uh, things to the rule. In addition, they improved a lot of the miniatures and the factions and created some additional storylines with uh, some of the expansions. I think we have all three of the expansions with this game now. And mm -hmm. But this is Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition designer Christian Peterson from Fantasy Flight Games. And uh, he was the North American director, you know, of Asmodee, uh, uh, founder of Fantasy Flight Games, now is retired. Uh, but this game, every time we play it, man, I mean, you're you're waiting for, to uh, you're going to play one of your actions and, and decide which of these two actions you're going to do. You're going to have negotiations. You're going to form alliances. Uh, at some point, you're going to break those alliances. Your fleet uh, gets too powerful. Something, Somebody's going to turn on you. Um, and a little clue, the war sun. Uh, do not let it fall on the ground and do not walk <laughs> on it barefoot. <laughs> this that's, will be a bad two or three months. <laughs> mm, that's the Sonic the Hedgehog playing spaceship piece <laughs> oh that's a poiky poiky thing but wow. this game is super heavy duty uh thick now they actually have the ti4 which is even more streamlined and i i think we do like that better but there's nothing wrong with ti3 and what a fantastic game and i i'll tell a really quick story about it but um I, we were coming back from my my brother's house down in southern minnesota and we were driving to the Fantasy Flight Game Center grand opening in Roseville, Minnesota. And as we were driving there, it was about an hour and 15 minutes, my son read the Twilight Imperium 3 uh, storyline, then read each of the storylines of both of the expansions. And I was so enthralled in this universe and him reading it so well. I mean, you this, thought you were flying a spaceship and not driving a car. I don't know. It was awesome. <laughs> it was just freaking awesome. It was, uh, we couldn't wait. And we actually played that game there with a group of people who come every weekend to play that game. All right. So you arrived at the Final Fantasy base and you said, this is no moon. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, but this game, I mean, yeah, the problem is this game, 
minimum six hours. And that's if everybody really knows what they're doing and you get after it. Um, mm -hmm. It's really eight to 10 hours. Uh, if, if truth be known, it's, it's a long involved thing, but. But there is I mean, a card that can bring the game to the end pretty abruptly, isn't there? Because I played an eight player player game. We played for about two and a half hours and this card come up and it was, it ended the game. Yes. And I'm forgetting what that's called. Um, uh yes you're mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, yeah. minimum but really, it's, it's, it's really hard because two of them have to be played together that's in it, order yeah. for it to happen and i can't remember what they are but yeah, yeah. that's a very strange uh, occurrence when that happens but yeah so but, one card comes up and then if the other one comes up later on then the game yeah, yeah. the i i just love it i think i think the story behind it the the way it looks on a table, you need a big table. People yeah. always wondered on our game toppers, can I play TI3 on a Watson? We play it on a Watson all the time, but then we have nice trays and everything to keep all of the bits. But because it's a big, expansive mm -hmm. uh, game. So a lot of people use our Mycroft to play TI3 because it's so large. But yeah. you can play, I think, uh, six or eight people. I think you yeah, can you play eight. eight now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's way cool. It's just way cool. If it was themed like Babylon Five, I'd get it. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> so well, moving tell, on. Tell me your last game. My third and final game is um, a game which you're starting to see a lot of the theme, which is painting. And in this game, players are going to be mixing colors um, to get the colors that they need to create these masterpieces and these masterpieces are going to be worth points at the end of the game but not only that the colors that you create are also worth points at the end of the game the game will terminate when uh, a player arrives at a certain point level and you just count your scores it's as simple as that but it is a very medium to heavy weight game which involves a bit of, ooh, I would say, I was going to say Carcassonne, but it, that's not really. Tile there's, laying. There's tile laying, but it's in I, a different I think form. I know the game by the name and description. I, I don't own it or have it, but is it is it called Pastiche? We are on form today. It is Pastiche. This is i think my wife's favorite game until i beat her three times in a row <laughs> <laughs> and now she doesn't want to play it this game is it's it's one of those games which is if you like to put your head down and really really brainstorm that's what this game does because you can see the long run which is the painting and you can see the colors that you need to complete that painting and then you have your hand of cards which has the paint that you have and then you have these tiles which when you place into the center where this big constellation of tiles will mix colors um and this is the heart of the game it's the mixing of the colors which can give you a lot of downtime um you can spend a lot of time thinking about where you're going to put your tile because of the colors that you need because you're going to be mixing two or maybe three little splashes of primary colors together to get the colors that you need and it's nice you you learn color mixing basically so there's a bit of education there um but um yeah a lot of the downtime is in when this collection of tiles gets bigger and bigger because there's more and more possibilities and more and more places and opportunities for you to get the colors that you need and uh, so you don't it, exceed your hand size to create the paintings that you need to get those victory points um the downtime as i said can be a problem but that's the good thing about it while there's a lot of downtime you wait for other players to play you're constantly thinking about other options that you can do with your tiles this is a fantastic game two players or four players or even three players is it <laughs> is it still in print um, I don't know if Eagle Griffin, Griffin recently reprinted it. They might have, hmm. um, but it's definitely a game to look out for if you like to to, to use your, your cerebral 
brain to do these like long calculations. There's not a lot of interaction apart from um, the paintings. There's a, there's a collection of paintings in the middle that you can exchange with. Um, but apart from that, it is a, a race to get points and do it in the most efficient way possible. And it's fantastic. Well, there you have it. The Woods of Evergreen, games that Berkey and Badger think stand the test of time. And we are like two seconds being 30-minute show. Who'd have ever yeah. thought that? Yeah, normally our phone calls last longer than that as well. <laughs> but, but now we're going to talk about that for a while, so we won't be 30 minutes. No, no. <laughs> I could always cut something out in the audio edit. <laughs> hey, so fun to be with you all. We're going to do this every time that we do a Berkey and Badger board game episode, and we're going to do it live on Facebook. So in the future, you're going to be able to join in and play along with us and learn about some of these games from years gone by and some games that we think are still still valuable to have in your collection or ones at least that we enjoy. And so with that, why don't you send us out, Sir Badger? Yeah, and if you have a favorite game from 2001 which you think has stood the test of time, write it in the comment section below. And we'll, 2011. Um, yeah, because they might be games that we've played and we think, yeah, that's actually a, a good game. Yeah. So until then, ciao for now, and remember to please play nice with each other. <laughs>